All right, so the last thing we need to talk about for buffers are just two terms, two terminologies that we use uh, when you're talking about buffers. And they pretty much just go to describe how well the buffer would work in certain situa situ blah, blah, blah. situations. Situations. All right, and they are buffer range and, wait for it, buffer capacity. Yep, that's the second one we're going to talk about. All right, so buffer range. So this is the range. I know you're not supposed to use the word to define the word, so I'm not supposed to use range in the buffer range, but I think I don't think that counts for this example. So the range of pH in which the buffer will be effective. AKA, be able to minimize pH changes. Because that's what buffers do, and that's, what they're, that's why they're so awesome. Right, and so this is like a numerical range of pH that it will work. And the general rule of thumb is plus or minus one around the pKa. So the buffer range is plus or minus, or the pKa, plus or minus one. So let's put this in a, an actual example. So let's think about that acetic acid we just used. The acetic acid, C2H3O2 minus, we just used. The pKa of acetic acid was 4.74. So the range would be 3.74 pK minus 1 to 5.74 pK plus 1. And that's pretty much the only pH is that this specific buffer will be able to work. And the reason why they're limited to a range is just goes back to the definition of buffers and what makes them able to work so well is that you've got a, a mixture of both the weak acid and weak base in comparable concentrations. So when you're going much past 3.74 or much, much more above 5.74, you've got too much of one and not enough of the other. So 3.74. If the pKa is 4.74, we talked about this yesterday, and the pH of the solution is 3.74, what do we have more of, the acid or the base? Acid. The acid, so the pH is lower than the pKa, so we've got excess acid. And that, minus one, one pH unit lower than the uh, pKa, because it's base 10, that means the concentration of the acid is 10 times as much acid. And then, of course, 5.74, that means that pH is above the pKa, so that means we have excess base, right? pH is higher. And that, because it's one pH unit log base 10 above the pKa, that means you have 10 times as much base. 4.73 times less acid. Yes, you, of course, could say that. And that's as far as you want to push, or you want to push um, the buffer system. So that's just a general rule of thumb. It's not binary. It's like once you get 3.73, suddenly it's not a buffer. It's just 
after that, you're just, you don't have very much base. So if you play less out of acid, you don't have much base there to neutralize it. So that's like its best working range. So what does that mean if we need to do a uh, reaction at, say, I don't know, pH equals 8.5? All that means is uh, we can't use this buffer system. Okay? We'd have to go and find some other buffer that has a pKa near 8 so I can do that. All right, so that's, that goes into your section of buffers. All right, so buffer capacity, 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 you know, just using that word out of, con or, you know, in general context, that's, you know, an amount. How much can it take or hold? How much, you know, the capacity of something. Well, the buffer capacity is basically a measure of how much acid or base you can add to a buffer and it still work. Okay, eventually a buffer is going to stop working if you play let's add acid too much. I mean, I know it's a fun game, but whoa, let's calm down. Okay, so the buffer capacity is a measure of how much acid or base can be added, that can be added, yeah sure, to a buffer and it still be effective. And what do I mean by effective buffer? Able to minimize changes in pH. That's what a buffer's job is. That's what it's awesome at. That's why we love them. And yes, we've progressed that rapidly. First we just started to like buffers. Now we love them. Okay? It's a fast relationship. All right, so this one, I can't give you a, you know, this is how much you can add to a buffer because it is concentration dependent of the buffer. Depends on how much weak acid and weak base you have in the bus buffer. So it would be specific to each buffer and the con concentration of that specific solution. So let's look at an example. All right, for this example, this buffer, we had 0.1 moles of both the uh, weak acid and weak base. 0.1 moles of the acetic acid, 0.1 moles of the sodium acetate. We added 0.01 moles of hydroxide, pH barely budged, 0.09. What if you were to add 0.2 moles of sodium hydroxide? Well, you've only got 0.1 moles of acetic acid. That's going to neutralize half the amount of sodium hydroxide you added, but there's still going to be 0.1 moles of sodium hydroxide in there. That's going to change the pH a great deal, all that excess hydroxide. So how much uh, acid or base a buffer can take is dependent on how much of the weak acid or weak base is present. And that pretty much wraps up our discussion of buffers. This is probably where I need to come up with like a clothing line for buffers, like hats and t-shirts, and sell them after lecture because I've won so many fans over. And you know, make extra money. Because you know, I need money. <laughs> <laughs>